Good morning, sunshine. It is currently 5.30 a.m. and we are getting started on our day in the life of Olympic champion Lydia Jacoby in her hometown of Seward, Alaska. Her day starts with morning practice at 6 a.m. Let's go. technique focusing on brushstroke, um, underwater pull downs, some trying to narrow up their kick and get some good uh, uh, timing and um, brushstroke arms, uh, getting a good, good pull put together. Lydia right now we're in this like early phase so we're trying to couple um, endurance uh, lifting parameters with more aerobic and for us a little more volume in the water um, just in the thought that we can increase mitochondrial density more oxygen processing um, ability and help her stay uh, stronger longer in her races and maybe help her like drop the 200 uh, times down as well second leg day this week we do Monday and Wednesdays are leg day and Tuesday and Thursday um, we have an arm back and chest and then uh, core so we kind of rotate those through the other days so today was my second leg day so I was expecting to be a little more tired than I was but actually went pretty well so right now we're in endurance where you're doing more reps with less weight um, with less rest which is probably my very least favorite and same in the pool like I don't really like doing that in the pool either um, so I would definitely prefer the like strength where you're doing less reps with um, more weight so we'll kind of move into that phase next and then right before I start like my big competitions we'll move into more power based stuff Oh no, I'm getting the otter. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just finished the morning workout, and now for the next part in the day of the life of Alaska and Olympian, we're doing a snow run in cleats. 
We're doing it. Snow run. And cleats. Why we back at the car? <laughs> we made it to the end of our cleat run, our snowshoe run. And now we're going to warm, nice and cozy, what's it called? Resurrect Art Coffee House. The best coffee house in Seward, Alaska. <laughs> the ice cleats sign and then there's a little place to hang your ice cleats before you go in. No ice cleats. <laughs> there's an ice cleats. <laughs> That's where you hang your ice cleats. <laughs> and here we are at Resurrect. We are here inside Resurrection Coffee and Art. The coolest place in Seward, Alaska. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe that's an overstatement, but it's pretty great here. Uh, Lydia, you come here at least once a day. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Um, what do you usually do here aside from enjoy the ambiance? Yeah, um, I come here with my friends a lot or by myself and work on schoolwork or just hang out. And it's a good place like if you're looking for something to do around town just to meet up and hang out. So it's always nice. <laughs> um, Leslie, you were giving me the backstory of Resurrection. Would you mind recapping just how Resurrection came to be? Oh, wow. Okay, yes. Um, in the early 90s, some friends of ours arrived in Seward from Valdez in their VW bus with their kids and drove into town and the church was for sale. And they came up with a vision and now there's local art and coffee and we're really thankful that happened. This is one of the <laughs> this is one of the oldest buildings in Seward, right? It's 1917, I believe it was built. So it's over 100 years old. <laughs> uh, you just had an art show here, or photography? Yeah, I did. They we are friends with the owners, and they're super um, supportive of like local music and art and stuff. So they had I hosted a photography show um, with one of my friends, and so yeah, we had all of our black and white film photography set up in here, and they opened it up for the evening so people could come and see it and have like snacks and yeah it was really fun. High fashion and couture is really interesting um, and that's always kind of where I see myself like ending up um, working at some point but it's also been really cool since the like NIL and everything um, getting to know some of these like more athletic brands like Arena um, and seeing how much fun like all the people that work there always have and like that's definitely something I could see myself um, being part of in the future as well. My parents always took me um, like thrifting whenever we would travel and then um, uh, some of my mom's friends are really into it and so they like show me how to find like all the designer brands and thrift stores and like get them for really cheap so um, I don't know, I've just always had fun with that, and then now I actually sell some of my clothes um, downstairs here. Um, and yeah, I follow a lot of designers on Instagram, and I just think it's fun to see. Um, I don't know, I guess uh, a lot of people think that fashion's kind of shallow, um, but I feel like it brings a lot of beauty into the world, and it's also cool to me, like, um, when people, like how much it can change your appearance. I know like several of my friends um, went through like a period in high school where they completely changed how they dressed and it just like increased their confidence and really made them like grow as a person just because of the different like clothing makes them feel so much more comfortable. So it's cool how much power it has. Do you find it ironic sometimes that you have this interest and yet, you know, most of what you wear on a day-to-day -day basis is just athletic wear. <laughs> yeah, no, it can definitely be frustrating. Like, right now I just came from the gym, so I'm wearing this, but, um, yeah, no, a lot of the time it is, um, it can be kind of frustrating and also, like, being an athlete, especially when you're at, like, meets or, um, I don't know, at, um, like a training camp, people are like, why are you wearing like cute clothes? It's like, oh, why not? I mean, like, <laughs> we don't get to any other time. So, yeah, I love playing dress up and doing all of that, so. Morning practice, check. Morning lift, check. Snowshoe run, check. Afternoon coffee, check. And now we're back for swim practice number two on the day. shorter warm up today um, just because the set itself is a little bit longer we're sort of trying to be a little more aerobic the free part we're just looking to extend our workouts and then these sessions are a little closer to speed um, 
RPE, so that's rate of perceived exertion. And we go off of the uh, the Berg scale. They said then that it was more accurate than actually like recording biomarkers, like analyzing sweat for uh, like lactate production and stuff like that. Um, so we, we try to use that and also just to cue in the subjectiveness of being able to make adjustments, stuff like that. Um, also, sometimes since we're a community-based pool, the temperature will get risen, raised up uh, quite a bit for kids that have a little muscle mass and get too hot. Um, so it's nice to have an RPE scale on days like that where maybe the conditions are such that it's, you're just not going to have fast times. So the first kind of, we did them in three sets, so like five chunks, or five rounds in each set. The first set, I was struggling a lot, um, but I really back half it, I came back, so I felt good about it, and honestly thinking about it, I think that's how I do a lot of my sets, and that's also how I race, I kind of like feel out first round, see how everyone else is doing, how I'm doing, how the set feels, and then really kicked it in in the last time. So, it was good.